Morning, everybody. Thursday morning, and we're going to get into the Word. We're going to get into the book of Isaiah, and yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited because we're getting closer to Christmas. We are getting closer to our cantata this weekend, and we'll talk a little bit about that. So the text is Isaiah chapter 7. We're looking at verse 14. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, as you join, you can share, um, you can say hi, but, and I think I might have turned the comments off here somehow. Anyway, let me know what your favorite Christmas cookie is. What is your favorite Christmas cookie? There's a lot of options, so I'm curious. Good morning, good morning. <clears throat> favorite Christmas cookie. Um, for me, favorite Christmas cookie, mm, I, you know, it changed a few years ago. My sister-in-law makes these dipped Oreos, I think. I, I don't even know what all goes into them. I just know that when it goes into my mouth, it's amazing, <laughs> right? So that is my favorite Christmas cookie. Good morning. Go go ahead and comment. I don't. I can't see your comments this morning, but that's okay. Um, the text for today is Isaiah seven, chapter Isaiah chapter seven, verse fourteen. It says, "Therefore, the Lord Himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel." It's a pretty famous passage that's read a lot during the Christmas season. It's short, but there's a lot there. Like, there's so many things that we could focus on. We could focus on the Immaculate Conception and, and how that just blows our minds in so many ways. Especially to me that God, Jesus, who created the world through him and, and for him, is suddenly this baby. And like, what, what human awareness does he have as a baby? It, it just blows my mind because he's still God, but he, he's a ba just a baby. So there's that, um, and then that God wants to, we have a God who wants to be found by giving seekers a sign, and that's, that's pretty amazing. So um, he's given the name Emmanuel, and that's God with us, and that's God invading our world, and, and what, what did we deserve, right? What did... Do we deserve? If, if you think about this objectively, the Almighty God comes to the world of people who sinned and rebelled against Him again and again and again. And they'd have to be thinking, uh oh, right? He's finally come to, to take His vengeance. That, that's just our, our, our natural inclination because we have this natural guilt for sin that, that needs to be dealt with. But that's where God just surpasses our expectations. And so he comes to be with us because he's for us. He comes to be nearer to us. He comes out of love, not out of judgment. And so that, that's, that's an amazing story of God with us. So when I was a kid, I was pretty young. I don't remember what age. I was shopping with my dad. And I don't remember where we were or how I got a sucker, but I was sucking on one of those suckers that has like the bent uh, stick so that it goes into the sucker on two ends and it's kind of a loop at the bottom, right? And I was sucking on the sucker and I finished the sucker and I, I'm a sucker biter, so they don't last long. And then I was biting on the stick a little bit. It was pretty gnarly. And we get to the checkout. I mean, I was, I was little, but I remember handing it to my dad, like, here, dad, I'm done. And my dad asked the checkout clerk if he could like throw it away and he kind of held it out like he could throw it in the trash basket but she just she thought that he wanted her to just grab it and so she's reaching for this gnarly gross sucker stick that this kid sucked on kind of like this right and then she throws it away and I think lots of times we think of ourselves like that sucker stick in the eyes of God and maybe even everyone else. We, we, we think of ourselves as 
too unworthy to be loved or because of our past, because of our sin, we, that just must be how God sees us. But God's not afraid of our brokenness. And we're not so messy that the master doesn't want to commune with us. That, that's who God is. It's incredible. That's God with us. So he comes to us as the God who will help us get back in right standing. And that's what Jesus did through his life, his death, and his resurrection. We're in right standing with God. He doesn't see us like that sucker stick. He sees us like he sees his own son. It's an incredible gift. And so even today, God's still with us. Right? Even though Christmas was over 2,000 years ago, God's still with us through his Holy Spirit, through his presence. And that spirit leads us to faith in Jesus that not only gives us forgiveness, but gives us eternal life. So remember that, that truth today, that God is for you, God is with you, and that's our theme for cantata this weekend as well. We'll have cantata Friday night at 6.30, Saturday night at 5.30, Sunday morning at 10.30. Both Saturday night and Sunday morning will be live online, so you can join us online as well. But uh, come celebrate the Christmas season and, and the truth of God with us. So let's pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for loving us enough to humble yourself and identify with us. And thank you for, for being with us and giving us a path back to God through your sacrifice. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for hanging out. Share this video. Uh, don't forget about Christmas Cantata this weekend. It starts tomorrow. And so God's blessings. Have an awesome Thursday. And we'll see you again tomorrow morning.